What is going on everybody? Welcome back to 628 Productions. Again, my name's Tim, bringing you everything Thunderbird related. Uh, we're working on Project Blackbird again. Been a while, it's good to be in front of the camera doing Thunderbird content with you all. Um, again, when I left you guys off, this one was coming out of the paint booth. I think that's really the last anything mechanical. We did some uh, hub swap, got that on film for you all. And that's kind of where she's been for a while. I've been cutting and buffing paint. Nothing that I thought was really deeming of an episode or content per se, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm watching other people on YouTube following their steps and hey, she shines, so thank you. I've decided to keep this car. So due to that, some of the corners, I wouldn't say corners, but things that I would typically delete or get rid of if I were gonna keep the car, I'm now doing, right? When I was first putting this back together, it was more of a, let's get it run, let's get it onto the next owner. If they wanna mess with it, they can. One of those items being the EGR system. First off, you can see how far I had to tear the motor down. EGR only involves you taking down the passenger side, which is the easier of the two sides to do. Honestly, the supercharger could still be on there, I believe. I only took that off uh, because of the other projects I'm kind of simultaneously doing, like the fuel lines are up there. That's not needed. You can leave that all where it is. All you really have to do is take off the front bracket with the jack shaft stuff, the air box, plug wires if you want, and then you're pretty well where you need to be and you have access to getting the manifold bolts. So that'll take me over here as to what you really need to do the process. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have a secondary manifold. Um, I just recently got this back from uh, the vocational school. I sent it over to the welding side of the school. They were kind enough to weld up the EGR um, bone, I guess if that's the terminology, and then put some new studs in it. Now, if you're looking at it from the original status, this is the one that did come off the car. You can see I broke one of the studs. That's what prompted me to put new studs in the other one. But uh, you can take the whole thing off in one big unit. And then when I took it off, and while it was on the car, I kept noticing that these hoses, the EGR hoses were not connected to anything. Um, if you see on this one, I guess the brazing uh, let loose, right? I don't know if you can get in there, but yeah, so um, I have everything there, but uh, essentially if you take EGR off of the car, you have the manifold, the metal pipe, and then that runs up to the, we'll just call it the EGR sensor. I don't know what that actually does. I believe it monitors air going in and out. If it doesn't get that reading, then it throws a check engine light. That's my understanding. I'm not the smartest, but that's what we got. So if you've never taken the exhaust manifold off, I've got all the bolts laid out. They're all 13 millimeters. The two in the middle um, also have, or maybe it might be these two. These or those um, have uh, another nut on the front. You gotta take off because your heater hose is connected to that to keep it stationary. So uh, it's a little bit of a fun task. Um, if you're gonna replace studs like I have, I mean, look at this janky stuff that was on there. So this is what was on here. It's a stack of like 15 washers, and yeah, maybe 10 with a bigger washer. I mean, it's like they just dug in the toolbox to find whatever they could. Really the better option is to go over to your local parts store, go into the Dorman help section, 03133. Those studs seem to be the appropriate ones. I mean, look what they have put in here. This is crazy. That's why they had to put, you know, a stack of washers in there because they're also uh, two feet longer. And if you notice, the threads go all the way down on these. Those, nope. All right, so I don't know. Again, a lot of janky stuff on this car. That's where we're going. It's just, and the more you dig, the more you find where you're like, eh, cut corners. <laughs> Trying to remedy that now that I'm going to keep it. Before again, I knew it was there. But it was like, well, you know, it's, it works. We'll leave it alone. Um, so again, at this point, you'd have the exhaust manifold ready to go. Factory, there was no gasket on the block. Now, again, this car has been worked on. This is actually a gasket. I believe it looks like a Felpro, pretty standard. Last time I bought a set, it was around $10. I don't think they're that expensive or that hard to find. Again, I'll probably pick up another set. Now, looking at the condition of this, um, definitely looks like there was some leaking. They're not the, the cleanest of gaskets. 
Um, that brings me to the supercharger. If you're deleting EGR, haven't been there before, uh, you gotta pick up one of these block off plates. These were actually factory on certain years. Uh, definitely pick up one of those. Um, and then of course, you should still have the original gasket. Peace of mind, put that behind it with some uh, black RTV. You're good to go. So really not a bad process. Um, probably like everybody, I'm in Virginia, but there was still rust, you know, tight bolts. Get you some PB blaster, soak everything the night before and then that'll give you a fighting chance to take it apart. But uh, uh, I'm gonna work on putting that back together. Really the opposite process of putting, you know, taking it apart. Um, I don't think there's any kind of torque sequence or torque specs on the uh, manifold bolts that I'm aware of. I've never uh, religiously read a book or anything like that to get them at the right specs. So I think it's just, you know, use your, your uh, train of thought there, make sure everything feels right. Um, another thing that you'll definitely want some anti-seize Permatex. Um, again, I just, when I put these studs in, you can see the anti-seize around the threads at the bottom, and then I'll follow suit when I put everything back together. This gives you a little bit of peace of mind putting it together that it's not gonna break, not gonna have a problem. Also, if you're over here, this would be a perfect time to do spark plugs because you can get your hand and stuff in there. Here are the plugs that came out of the car. They do not look happy at all. And I got them in order. Uh, this is one, two, three. And then this would be actually uh, number six because I just started working on the driver. So I only moved that over there. I got in the four hole. But um, you can do, you know, these are um, Autolite uh, double platinum 2544s. I think those are equivalent to the Motorcraft. Another thing a lot of folks do uh, tinker on these cars. Auto Light 103 Coppers. Um, that's what I have in the white car. I think it's in every car. I've never had trouble with them. I think they're a degree colder. Maybe, maybe not. Don't quote me on that. I'm not the best at uh, those items of remembering, but uh, they work. They're a little bit cheaper. Being a copper plug, something goes bad. My understanding is it's more of a melt rather than, you know, a piece of platinum going in there, maybe messing up a cylinder. At least that's the thought process. I could be wrong in talking out my, you know what, but that's what we're rolling with. So um, that's basically what we got, guys. I'm gonna work on putting it back together. Um, again, if you're on here for the technical side, I think I touched all the bases. Um, the actual process of getting some of the stuff out of the way, pretty straightforward. Again, if you don't know how to get where I am currently on this engine, I do have a video on teardown. Uh, it might behoove you to watch it. That's where I kind of go over everything that's needing here. Not gonna beat a dead horse by doing it twice. So. Um, I got everything. I'm going to start putting it back together. Oh. Put in some studs and we got this one done. Oh. What oh, happened here, fellas? Let me fix the equipment. Equipment failure. Oh, I'm going in backwards. There, there we go. Hmm. I don't know how well it's going to show up, but the new studs are poking through. Let's see here. Oh. Quit the failure again. Let's try it now. All right, so lighting is horrible, obviously, but I've uh, got the new stud through the manifold connection there. Let me put a nut on it. And that's nice. Alright, top one, you gotta go with that one a little blind. I did it with an extension to take it off. Holy crap, where's you? down let me grab another one oh 
shoot. So since I did this last, the transmission has leaked all over the place. So now, another nut down. I have to kind of like reach and bend and contort my body so I'm not laying in oil because after this, I'm going home and I don't have, I guess I might be going without a shirt on. Let's see here. Oh, I'm so close. Up. Ah. Yep. Welcome to laying under a car. You should film it when you're doing it too. This makes it even better. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. One time for Tim. Come on. One timer, one timer. Hey, hey, a girl. All right. Oh man, that's nice. Let me tighten them as far up as I can so I'm not down here wrenching for 30 minutes to go up the stud for no reason. Wiggle, wiggle. All right, that's good. I'll take off screen. I just want to bring something to y'all's attention while I'm under here. Ooh. Obviously, there's a lake again. We went through the lake situation, right? God, I keep losing y'all. All right, just a second here. Just want to show y'all something. This is crazy. Again, each their own. I'm a little OCD, so if you're this guy, don't take offense to it. It's cool. If I can never get up, oh, getting old sucks, fellas. Um, working a couple things here. <laughs> so I told y'all, look, that's in addition to what was already on the table. Like, there's washers for days. I just don't understand why somebody wouldn't just buy the right stud. Blows my mind. Look at this. Huh. I don't know. All right, gang. We're topside. Uh, again, left you. I was right down there. And again, Red Death just keeps following me. That's what I'm calling the transmission fluid. But that thing just keeps leaking. That'll be another episode coming up. I think I'm done with this 4R70W. But uh, EGR at this point is deleted. We've uh, modified the manifold, capped off the port, reinstalled everything. Uh, reinstalled the exhaust manifold gasket. I didn't film that stuff. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I did put anises on all the uh, hardware that went back into the head just for my own personal peace of mind. Um, you can do that or some kind of lubricant would be my suggestion so you don't break something off. And uh, the only piece that I haven't got on film and I'm just realizing this, um, if you look at the back here, right there, that round deal is a sensor. It's bolted into the back of the head. It looks like a 13 millimeter, maybe a 15. I kind of did the old finger. Yeah, let's figure it out kind of deal. You got to take that off. Then these uh, two vacuum hoses come off and I've already unplugged it from the Christmas tree there. So just take those off, cap off the tree. EGR is deleted, you're done. Um, save yourself the headache, man. If you're ever gonna work on these cars long-term, be an enthusiast, you're gonna tear the car back apart at some point. It's gonna pay dividends. It's worth it. It sucks now, it'll pay off later. Especially if you're just getting into these cars and getting into the forums and stuff, or you wanna go faster, you're gonna upgrade the blower some point down the road, you're gonna upgrade the injectors, you're gonna upgrade the heads, cams. Heck, you might even hit up Dave Dalk over at SCU and say, build me a monster. You know, that's just how this works. It's a passion if you're that person. Delete EGR now, save yourself the headache. Now, closing flip side of the coin and I'll let you guys get back to your day. If anybody needs this stuff, uh, let me know down in the comments. Leave one, say, hey, Tim, reach out to me. Uh, I need to, need to get this for mine. I live in an area where they put the sniffer test on their cars. I don't have a sniffer test. I can put an antique tag on it, none of it matters. 
Um, so I'd rather go to a good home than in a trash bin. You can't find the stuff anymore. And uh, you know, who knows? Maybe one day you'll get to this stage and uh, who knows, man, maybe you may not need it ever, but uh, I don't want to throw it away. If somebody needs it, please let me know. You can hit me up in the messages below or you can hit me up on 628 Productions on Instagram. Slide into those DMs as the jive turkeys and kids say. I'm an old man, I guess that's what they say. Something like bussin. Bussin's a word today. I don't know what it means, but let me know. I don't want to throw it away. Be glad to help y'all. So that's it. Thank y'all. Oh, go blue. I had to for my Ohio friends. Y'all be good.